Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art, located here in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, September 28, 2018. And as always, we'll take a look back at last week's eBay and Catawiki auction results. Take a look ahead and see what's coming up uh, uh, that'll be ending uh, Monday and Tuesday and uh, so on next week as well, as well as this weekend. Um, a couple of quick notes. Um, take a look here. Uh, right now on on uh, on the bid amount uh, site on page two, there's a couple of fairly large sales running. Uh, one is uh, uh, Juice one four nine nine. That's uh, the seller seller name for uh, Chamberlain Antiques in New Hampshire, and they've got a 250 lot sale up. Uh, there's a really nice transitional vase. If you like transitional porcelain, you might want to check it out and some other pieces. And we're going to talk about a couple of them at the end here. And Egmont Horn, um, uh, Frankie over there uh, in the Netherlands, hey, he's got a good sale up, uh, quite a few things, and they end um, on the uh, 30th. They end on over the weekend on Sunday. Some very good things, some good Japanese things too. A lot of you like Japanese things. Um, uh, both these sales have pretty good Japanese items, and we're going to get to them in a bit. Um, the other thing is we did get the uh, video up today for the upcoming Hong Kong sales. Uh, in particular, the two Bonham sales to do with metalworks and bronzes and Tibetan and Himalayan art, two fabulous collections. And the uh, Sotheby sale uh, that are taking place is several of them, the Spielman collection, the Lee collection, and of course the Yamanaka uh, 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 Famille Rose vase that's like the one from Bainbridge as we covered all of it. It's a fairly long video because I had a lot, there was a lot to cover. It was, a, it was There's a bounty this time around over there and some absolutely stunning stuff. So please check that video out. It'll be, it, it's up, uh, by the time you see this, it'll be up, okay. All right, now flipping over to uh, what happened at eBay last week. Uh, we had this. There was a pair of these paintings, two of them in these old frames um, of uh, swallows, uh, uh, ink, and, and, ink and color. Um, I thought they were rather nice. They, they needed a little bit of conservation, I think. There's a little bit of foxing, but nice old paintings. And uh, they did pretty well. They brought $522. But uh, great items. I, I, I like uh, the, the sort of late 19th century, really cool. She had them in as um, uh, being 1722. I think they were later, later editions by that artist. But um, and it doesn't matter. They were wonderfully done. Okay. Uh, I, uh, I was, uh, sometimes people get signatures and they think, oh, it's got the signature. You know how that goes with Chinese stuff. All right. And doesn't always mean much. And uh, then you have this, the uh, silk uh, lady shoes, the, the bound feet. Um, this is a, a nice pair. They're, they're late 19th, early 20th century, but quite elaborate and complete with these elevated cuffs. And uh, these got a lot of interest. They went for $1,663. Um, th this type, this form is quite rare, and they were complete, and they were in pretty good shape. All right. And uh, on to this. This was a, it was a curious lot. This was a blue and white bowl, and they had it with a vase. Um, and the vase wasn't really, I mean, it was, it was okay. It was nothing perfectly, perfectly nice, nothing wrong with it. But um, it wasn't a particularly great, you know, vase. It was a late 18th, early 19th century vase. But the plate was nice. And the plate sort of, I think, carried most of the weight here. And it went for $485. All right. And then on to over to this, this really great little sl sort of sleeping uh, immortal with his, with his bag and, and this, this nice little piece of coral and turquoise, nice soapstone carving and an old stand. I thought this was just charming. It was beautifully carved, very nicely carved. Facial expression on this was really quite excellent. I hope, even if you don't buy these things, you should take a look because you could get a real, a real look at the quality of the piece. Look at the face was so beautifully done on this. Just great, great quality, the fingers and the whole thing. At any rate, uh, it, it, it did fine. It brought $1,629, but it was an elegant, elegant little object. Um, and uh, uh, from, from a seller we see periodically, but not often. All right, and then there was this Daosai plate. Um, I had to look at this pretty hard, and I, I think it was okay. Um, uh, um, if not, it was a slightly slightly later example. It has a, uh, 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 of course, the, the, the apocryphal Chen Wan mark. It looked to me to be, um, you know, 18th century, early 18th century. Uh, and judging by this sort of nice vanilla, it's very smooth foot rim and so forth. I think it probably is period, probably Kang Shi. Um, and, uh, but beautiful, done, nice enameling. Uh, good, good Femi Ver, I mean, good uh, Daosai enameling on this. 
and it did fine. It ended up bringing thirty six hundred and fifty dollars, which is right about in the range. That's right about what that would be worth. Um, if it was market period, you could you could probably go five times that number. But this is a nice little plate, and uh, I don't know the section mile the, the seller Mile High Collection. Uh, they have a lot of feedback They're out in Colorado. It sounds like Mile High City, of course, Colorado, and uh, it's it sounds like uh, uh, they handle estates. They got they got into a nice piece. All right, and then they had this Noya Straits um, um, a wine a teapot, uh, very attractive, nice strong pink Famille rose in that with this good turquoise ground, and uh, it it got quite a bit of interest. And it ended up going for fourteen hundred and ten dollars. All right, nice piece. This was from a seller we'd never seen. He only has two feedbacks, and uh, hopefully he's got a whole warehouse full of these because then that was a nice little pot. All right, and then you have this carved uh, snuff bottle, um, a nice looking one with, a, with with geese on a shoreline in it, and it's a carved carnelian, and uh, a little bit maybe some agate on the top there. But anyway, it did fine. It brought six hundred and eleven dollars. It was a good look. If you're a snuff bottle collector, there were quite a few snuff bottles on this on on last week um, from assorted sellers. So you you. You, you never know on eBay. There's also a lot of fake, fake snuff bottles, but modern ones. You sort of have to be careful about who the seller is. That was a nice one, though. That was a nice one. And then you have this uh, very attractive Kang Shi uh, dish, and it's got these old, st- you know, these old mounts on it. It looks like they're pretty old to me. Yeah, old mounts, probably from the 50s or the 40s or something. There's a side shot of it. There's one of these track rim, um, uh, track, track-footed bowl uh, situations. It's interesting. Somebody once told me that knows a lot about this kind, of, knew a lot about this stuff. He said that uh, they made copies of these, but the uh, the originals, uh, the outer foot was higher than the inner foot, and on the copies, the inner foot and the outer foot tend to be the same height. So um, as you as you're going around looking at things, you might want to check that and see if that seems to be true. Um, I I have checked it. It seems to be about right to me. The, if the inner foot is the same height as the outer foot, pretty good chance it's a copy. But Maybe you have a different experience. Also, the rim fritting on this looked awfully good, and uh, everybody liked it. It brought eleven $1, hundred and twenty-six dollars, and uh, these these Buddha hand, these citron finger deals, and the in the in the in the uh, in the pomegranates and all that are quite attractive. People love those. All right, and then on to this this nice big, very d- deeply enameled Femi Ver plate uh, plaque, rather of a, of a court scene of some type. Um, uh, really well done. It's a it's a nineteenth late nineteenth century plaque. Um, it's not an early early one. Uh, here's the back of it. Pretty pretty typical late nineteenth century. Thick, well made, but very nicely decorated. This was a good Femi rare example, and uh, everybody seemed to love it. It uh, did quite well. It brought thirty seven hundred and sixty dollars. Um, you do see these with less elaborate decoration, and they go for a thousand or fifteen hundred. But that was a particularly nice one. That was a good looking one. All right, and then on to this, Lady Liberty and the Shield. This is a very unusual export plate made during the early 19th century, probably, um, with the American uh, heraldry on it and the eagle. Uh, You don't typically see these uh, very often. It's a pretty rare pattern, and uh, it it got some attention. It brought $981. She she had, the seller had it down as late 18th century. I think that's a, a little too soon, maybe. Um, uh, it's possible, 1790s or something, but the, uh, the, the, the shield wasn't a common um, um, uh, decoration until pr- really into the 19th century. Um, the, the flag was pretty new itself, and they didn't have shield banners, uh, I don't think, before 1800. At any rate, on we go. Um, it was an easy mistake for someone to make. You have this nice Mandarin duck um, 18th century plate, probably Chin Lung period. A nice one. This was Ancient Arts had this. He gets good things. He's over in Breda in the Netherlands. And uh, he always uses very pretty peaches in his pictures. And uh, this was a nice plate. And it ended up going for $521. All right. Perfectly good price for that. That was a nice thing. And then over here to this, this probably a uh, transitional period or very early Kung Shi, a uh, hot food pot. And it was missing it. So you can see here, you have these holes uh, where they used to have the metal hang- handles. It'd be a handle on this side, handle on the other side, and a lid. And it was a hot food pot. And they, you find these. Um, we had a collection of them a number of years ago. They're really interesting. And uh, this one did pretty well. It brought $562. But I don't think it was a particularly big one. These can get quite big. 
Um, I think it's sort of a, a, a six or eight. Well, how big was it? We can look. Yeah, eight inches. Okay, it's a, it was an eight inch, seven, eight inch model. <clears throat> they do get as big as 10 or 11 inches, 12 inches. They can go quite large. Uh, and then moseying along over to this, you have this very nice uh, uh, Yongchen to Qinlung period charger, 38 inches in, uh, uh, 38 centimeters rather in diameter. This was a pretty big plate. Uh, it had a hairline um, and so forth. It wasn't perfect, but it was a good looking charger. And if you own any chargers and you have them on your walls, you, you, you know how much fun, how nice they are to have around because they really do present themselves especially when you get things that are in the 14, 15, 18 inch area. They, they make a wall. I, I really like them. All right. And uh, that one went for $432. Okay. And we're going to hop over here for a minute over to uh, take a look at, at Katawaki to see what things are going on over there. Because some people aren't looking, I, I think. Uh, some people do. I hope you're looking because there's some good buys on there. And there are some things that bring, a lot, uh, bring quite a lot of money. And the, and the prices are, are, are pretty, pretty, getting pretty good. Um, is it was this very nice Chinese Amari dish beautifully painted this had very attractive colors on it and if you like Chinese Amari in good condition it's actually a, a shallow bowl but the gilding on this notice the gilding always check the gilding when they when there should be there this one the gilding is all very intact which is important and uh, it was a pretty good buy $255 that's not an overpayment that was a pretty good deal all right and then uh, this was also over to here. They had this Chinese, you see a lot of Chinese Amari coming out of the Netherlands. You had this very nice Chinese Amari Kangxi bowl. This was a pretty bowl with good underglaze blue and, you know, over enamels and all that business. And um, there's another shot of it. And it was in good condition. Sorry about that. Had a little interruption. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's a, this was a nice Kangxi bowl. And it brought $1,452, which is a good price for that, even with a couple of little nicks on the rim. Had a good-looking interior, too. All righty. And then over to this is the uh, 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 Chinese Amari side-handled uh, chocolate pot. All right. This was a good-looking chocolate pot. I like the rabbit. Did anybody notice the rabbit in that? And uh, these uh, 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 pomegranate uh, devices at the top. Uh, rather attractive, nice looking thing. And uh, this did okay. It brought $938. Uh, export porcelain, as you know, isn't as strong as it used to be. So, so that's about the right price for that, $800 to $1,200 for these side handled pots, typically, typically. All right, and then there was this great looking, I'm a sucker for horse plates. There were two horse plates. There's one here and there's one here. And uh, uh, those of you who have been watching the videos, I just love horses on Chinese porcelain, on bowls and bronzes and everything else. This was a pretty one, nice colors. Uh, I, love, I love the way the trees are sweeping in the wind. Um, sometimes they did horses' tails that in that almost identical way. And it went for $255. And then right after it, I think this is the same seller. He had this one up. And this one is a bit more, you know, a bit looser, a bit sketchier, not quite as intense. But, but nicely done, too, and the horses, um, their, ex their facial expressions are a little easier to see, a little better. The willow trees are a bit more relaxed. Um, you know, I love this bird nose diving at them. And um, it, this one went for $371, okay? That's, that's in the range for these. All right, and then there was this bronze. We actually featured this bronze because I like old bronzes with great surfaces. And this was a nice old Ming bronze with a really good, deep cocoa uh, uh, glaze uh, uh, surface to it, rather. Uh, just a very attractive piece. And uh, he's a you know a soldier. He's in his whole outfit and uh, right on his original stand. I thought this was quite nice. And uh, it did okay. These, this wasn't a huge thing. It was like four or five inches tall or something. And it went for $591. Not bad. That was a nice thing. That was a, That's something you could own for a long time and like it. I like it a whole lot. All right. And now we're going to head over to... Um, let's see here. What's what's coming up? What's going to end over the weekend? There'll be a bunch of stuff over on Catawiki. We haven't we haven't gone through it all yet, but uh, on eBay right now, there's a, there's very nice uh, and pretty unusual um, Kingfisher silver pendants. Okay, this is a nice looking um, uh, 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 setup. It's lost some of its feathers, as you can see um, uh, in here. This should all be feathers. Okay. But if this goes to China, believe me, they'll get feathers back on that thing. And uh, this is this is a nice a nice uh, piece of work, and it's up to four hundred and fifty dollars. It closes tomorrow, Saturday. But if you're a king, that's an early, that's an old one. That's a nice old nineteenth century one. A lot of the ones you see floating around aren't that old. 
And you have this r- rather attractive Femi Ver Ewer. It's an 18th century one, and it has issues. This thing has issues. Be, and make, it's got a repair here, and it's got some junk going on up here, but it's an unusual form. All right, and uh, if you if you like things that are uh, cool and unusual, and, and you don't want to spend everything you own, you know, to get it, uh, you might want to keep an eye on this. And uh, right now, it's only up to about eighty bucks, so it's a good deal. Okay, and then on to this was this uh, very nice Kung Shi period, eighteenth century inscribed, uh, looks like a poem to me. Um, cup. Uh, there's the uh, bottom. No, I'm not so sure. That, yeah. Kang Shi or 18th century. I'm not sure it's Kang Shi. It might be a little later. But it's a good looking cup. And I like the decoration a lot. And I like the inscription. And I think it's going to do quite well. The shape is good. It's already up to $510 and it's 41 bids chasing it. All right. And then on to this. This was a, a, a nice uh, a brown dressed um, mold, molded relief in underglazed blue Japanese dish. Uh, this is a good one. This, I believe, is Egmont Horn. Um, this is a nice old dish, okay? Beautifully done, beautiful quality. Look at the quality. Look at the, the sort of the, the, this hidden impressed, uh, the waterfall going through the center of it and the man holding uh, uh, flowers out on, on, on the point. Just a charming scene, brown dressing on the rim, and it's up to $204. Yeah, it's Egmont Horn. Yeah, of course it is. And uh, it's a nice, that's a, if you like Jap- good Japanese, uh, uh, early Japanese uh, porcelain, this is a, that was a, that's a very pretty one, quite interesting. And uh, uh, Juice, uh, Chamberlain Antiques has this up. This is a, a silver and gilt bronze uh, 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 Buddha. It's a, this is a really good one. Uh, this is a, a very good figure. And um, you see these in the big auction houses. And uh, I think it'll, it, should, it deserves to do extremely well. Okay, that's a very nice one. 17th century, as he says, he's correct. And uh, it's, uh, it's up to $6,100. And I wouldn't be surprised to see it go uh, uh, to maybe triple that. All right, that's a heck of a nice bronze. All right, so uh, keep an eye on it. That's a, that's a good thing. That's a really good thing. All right, and then Josh also has up this. This is a piece that it's got a Namakawa Yatsuyuki plaque. It's Japanese, but it's, it's got a, it's, it looks like to be, I don't know whether that's the bolted on plaque or the screwed on plaque. Maybe, maybe it says in the description, but it's the Namakawa mark and um, very good quality uh, cloisonne, as you know, if you're a Namakawa buyer. And there's, he also has another piece. He's got some good Japanese. He's also got a really nice Japanese scroll of a Buddha up. Uh, but there's also this lacquered and silver inlaid uh, uh, vase, and this might go very reasonably. But if if you if you if you buy Japanese stuff, and you don't have a ton of money to throw around. This is a good looking object. The shape of it's quite attractive. All right, and uh, that's about it. We're going to put up a bunch. Of, we'll have a lot more Chinese stuff up this weekend. There's some there's some very good Japanese material coming along, and. Um, as I said, we got, we'll, we'll get to the uh, auction price results next week after some of the sales clean, finish up over in Hong Kong. And um, that's about it. And, uh, oh, on the, if you haven't subscribed yet here, please do. And give us a thumbs up if you enjoy these each week. It, uh, we're trying to boost our rankings, I guess, on YouTube. My, my kids keep telling me that's the object of the game here. And um, <laughs> we like doing the videos anyway. But uh, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, a couple of people on the forum have wondered if we would – maybe expand the video thing and perhaps do uh, some sort of either a live stream at some point if we can get to, get up to that point or have some sort of a, like, a, like a weekly mailbag and people could mail in images of things or ask questions and we could make that part of a, some sort of weekly thing and I'm not opposed to it. I think it's sort of a fun idea. So uh, go over to the forum and uh, you'll find the, the, the thread for that and uh, put in a suggestion if you have one. Okay, love to hear from you. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet over at BitAmount, please do. It's free, as you all know. And uh, we do this every week, and we do the newsletter every week. And, uh, you know, we tend to do them on Fridays when things are getting finished. All right. But thanks so much for visiting, as always. And uh, have a great weekend. I hope you find something out there that you love. And, um, and good luck on here. There's some good sales closing this weekend, so check them out. Okay? All righty, everybody. Have a good weekend, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.